If you're watching this video when I first publish it, we are just a day away from the launch of Front Mission 2 Remake. As such, I figured it was time to return to Front Mission 1st Remake so that I can give you my thoughts on whether you should check these games out before 2 drops. So, should you? Well, if you're a fan of turn-based strategy RPGs and or mecha, absolutely. If that's all you want to know, feel free to click away now, but if you want to know more about this lovely return to a classic series, I suggest you stick around for the details. Let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. If you find this video informative or you enjoy my coverage of the turn-based strategy RPG genre, a like and a sub would mean the world. I'm a small-time creator working to make YouTube my full-time career, and I need all the help I can get to make that dream a reality. Thank you so much. Front Mission started as a Super Nintendo title, and the series is a classic of the turn-based strategy RPG genre. Sadly, this series is actually one that I never got the chance to play back in its heyday, and is one of the first non-Super Robot Wars games in the genre to feature mecha combat with its trademark Wanzers. That's kind of a shame. If you've been following me in the channel for a while now, you know that mecha is kind of a big deal for me, after all. Fortunately, Forever Entertainment has stepped in to remake the first three games in the series, bringing them up to the graphical standards of the modern day and making it all the easier for new fans like myself to experience the magic. Forever Entertainment were actually gracious enough to grant me a key for the game when it first launched, so thank you to them for that. And you should know it is available on PC via Steam, as well as all current and previous gen consoles, with I having played the Steam release. Now, it's important to be clear about just what kind of remake this is. Unlike huge projects like the Final Fantasy VII or Resident Evil 2 remakes, mechanically and content-wise, Front Mission First Remake is largely pretty much identical to its previous releases. The major changes here are the completely overhauled graphics, sound design, and OST, as well as the inclusion of the optional USC secondary scenario from the PlayStation release of the game, and a New Game Plus mode. While some might try to say that that makes this more of a remaster than a remake, I don't really agree with that sentiment. The game has, after all, been rebuilt from the ground up in Unity, it's just that it's more the cosmetic aspects of the game that have received the most attention here. Notably, this means that while the game includes a toggle to switch back and forth between the classic and remade OST, there is no such toggle for the graphics. There's also a few bugs to make note of, which we'll get out of the way first, and then we'll discuss the game itself. The first major thing to note is that there is a bit of an issue with long-term play in the form of a memory leak. I can't confirm if this is a problem on other systems or on Steam, but on the Switch version of the game, even today, a long time after release, if I play for more than an hour or two at a time, there is an increasing risk that I will suddenly have the game lock up and crash, presumably due to a memory leak. Crashes on the Switch are fairly few and far between. Obviously, games that are made for it are pretty graphically chill, <laughs> and you're not likely to run into things that cause major graphical issues or bugs that lead to crashes compared to something like, say, Cyberpunk, right, on PC. So, it's a little bit unfortunate, but as long as you're saving semi-regularly, it's not like it takes very long to restart the game if it does wind up crashing on you. As far as bugs are concerned, there are also some animation bugs that can play out that will actually cause your Wanzer to use the wrong weapon for its attack while still maintaining the effects of the attack. This is a purely cosmetic bug that does not impact the actual nature of your attack at all, and it can be pretty funny besides. Watching your high caliber sniper rifle fire 8 rounds rapid into an enemy Wanzer because it's actually your submachine gun is pretty great as is seeing your multi-chamber Gatling cannon fire one massive slug at the enemy. So, it was pretty inoffensive, and it's always something that puts a smile on my face when it does happen. There are also reports that the Steam release of the game is a straight port from the Switch version, with no proper keyboard and mouse implementation, which leads to crashes when attempting to use said control scheme. This is not something that I've been able to verify for myself, but it is something that was discussed rather frequently in the Steam reviews, so be warned if this is the version of the game that you want to pick up. Moving on from the bugs and issues such as that, let's talk about the game itself, and we'll start with the combat gameplay. You have two full campaigns to play with here, with their own unique but interconnected stories, which makes for a pretty healthy amount of content to play. Playing both is required to get a full picture of the story, and you can choose which campaign that you want to start with. That said, the original OCU campaign is the recommended start point, as the USC campaign is far more challenging and less forgiving. There are also a number of difficulty modes. I chose to play on normal, since I had no experience with the game, didn't really have any idea of how difficult normal would be, but as a fan of the genre, as someone who plays a lot of these games, it was largely pretty easy. 
There were a couple of missions that threw curveballs at me. It actually sent me back to the start and forced me to rethink my approach, but those were few and far between, and overall, it was a pretty breezy experience. I would recommend saving higher difficulties for New Game Plus, as without stronger parts and weapons, I can see them getting very grindy very fast, as enemy HP and damage scales up incredibly quickly. As far as the strategy of the game is concerned, it's simple but fun. Choosing when to attack, counter, and block makes both enemy and player phase engaging. A major focus of the strategy that does exist is disabling enemy parts and preventing them from disabling your own. On Wanzers, you have four parts that can be targeted by attacks. The actual torso, the core of the Wanzer, which will destroy the whole unit if it gets destroyed. The left and right arms, which if disabled will prevent the Wanzer from using any weapons on the associated arm and shoulder. And finally the legs, which as you can imagine will not fully prevent the Wanzer from moving, but extremely heavily nerf its movement range. This way, even if an enemy Wanzer is too strong for you to just outright destroy in a couple of battles, you can choose to pick apart some of its more vulnerable extremities and reduce its combat capability until you are able to eventually bring it down. In certain battles or against enemies that have particularly powerful parts, this is a very, very important strategy to entail, and it's also something you need to keep aware of because it can happen to you as well. Unless you have a supply truck nearby, a destroyed part will remain destroyed for the entire battle, so making sure that you pull back, heal up, prevent a unit from getting swarmed, letting its parts be destroyed is very, very important. And it lends a very nice push and pull to the battles in front mission that you don't often see in other strategy games. It's like, well, either I healed my unit or I didn't heal my unit, but even if they've got one HP left, they can keep on fighting. Not necessarily how things are going to work here. There's also a very large quantity and variety of weapons, which gives you plenty of options for approaching battles, and which can allow you to make each member of your squad a very unique, focused asset. There are consumable weapons and tools like acid bombs and landmines that you can use to weaken enemies and set traps. However, compared to the generally useful array of weaponry that you can equip on your Wanzers, these consumables, other than your repair kits, are pretty useless from my experience. After all, attacking and destroying an enemy or their parts was pretty much a non-issue without using any of these consumables, so you can just do that rather than spending money and time utilizing these weapons that you don't really need. Maybe they're more useful in higher difficulties. There's a couple edge cases where it would have been nice to have like an acid bomb to reduce an enemy's defense, but by and large, these are pretty much completely unnecessary, and I just filled all of my unit's slots with consumable repair kits to, again, keep their parts from being destroyed, because it's kind of important. In the OCU campaign, mission objectives are largely simple destroy all enemies variants, but the maps are varied and include difficult terrain, heights to navigate, and different types of enemies, including wanzers, helicopters, tanks, turrets, and all that sort of fun military stuff to navigate around. In the USC campaign, though, things are a bit more challenging and varied. You get far fewer units that you can utilize, you have much more limited part access in the early game, and there's a greater mix of different objective types, including defense and escort missions, that helps that campaign feel a little bit more varied and definitely a lot more challenging. The fact that this campaign was actually developed after the original campaign was in a later release of Front Mission is very clear. It's obvious that the devs that made this new version of the game and made this new campaign learned a lot from the more bare bones aspect of the initial OCU campaign. Leveling and skill acquisition is unfortunately rather obtuse and poorly explained, but once you figure out how things work, how leveling your individual stats will allow you to unlock abilities that you can then choose to learn and equip, makes the overall leveling system very satisfying once you do understand it. Combat XP is distributed amongst the four skills of short range, long range, melee, and dodge based on how much you do of each. And as I said prior, the more XP a skill has, the better your character will be at it, and at certain thresholds you'll unlock very powerful skills that you can learn. Like, seriously. Getting even just a single level of something like Duel that allows you to specifically target your attacks at individual body parts on an enemy Wanzer completely changes the game. Every single one of these skills will dramatically improve your combat abilities, increase the number of rounds that you fire in battle, giving you the chance to fire multiple weapons at once, like I said, letting you target particular parts to disable, etc, etc. It's a ton of fun, and it's just opens the game up so much once you start unlocking the initial batch of skills. Something else that's nice is that there are actually hidden mission objectives and out of combat conversations that you can find that lead to other side missions, new recruits, and powerful part unlocks, or entire pre-built machines that you can put a pilot into and send out onto the battlefield. 
And th these missions and side content and everything just help to flesh out your army, let you get more XP, learn a little bit more about the world. And it's just really fun when they show up because there's pretty much no indication that they exist. And then suddenly you find something cool and it's like, oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that at all, but this is really nice. It keeps things fresh, which is always good. Of course, combat is only half the battle in front mission, because after all, you have to build and customize your Wanzers in order for them to be useful on the battlefield, right? Now, similarly to the strategy in front mission first remake, building your Wanzer is fairly simple, but you do have a lot of options at your disposal. You might not be tuning for individual stats like thruster speed and ECM defense like in an armored core game, but Crafting a Wanzer that suits the needs and combat style of each pilot at your disposal is still a ton of fun. Finding the right balance of armor, speed, and HP on your parts while staying underweight, and equipping weapons that match a pilot's stats and skills can be a challenge, especially when factoring in limited money and considering your combat needs. Handheld weapons include such standard options as machine guns, shotguns, rifles, and then more esoteric options like flamethrowers and railguns, as well as handheld missile launchers and melee weapons of various shapes and sizes. You can also just punch with your Wanzer, which is really fun, and oftentimes actually better than using a melee weapon. The actual damage output of your arm parts tends to be higher than your melee weapons, which is weird. Uh, your shoulder weapons, in turn, are a bit more limited, but they still provide a variety of missile launchers with different firing patterns, ammo capacities, and ranges, as well as shoulder-mounted shields to increase your defense. Your body parts provide even more variety, with lots of really lo cool-looking shapes and models of torso, arms, and legs. Torsos provide different power levels, arms have various accuracy, melee power, or even their own built-in weapons like cannons and machine guns, and legs provide different weight limits, move ranges, and terrain compatibility based on the leg type of bipedal, tank tread, or hover. You can even install different targeting systems to improve your core stats and focus the ones that matter most for the pilot in question. Finally, while limited, there are some cosmetic customization options as well. You can rename your Wanzers and change their color scheme, which lets you add a little bit of personal flair to your custom-built war machines. Onward to the story and writing of the game, and honestly, I was pretty surprised by the writing in Front Mission First Remake. It's nothing special, really, the story of war and the people who fight it, which is backed up by a secret evil experiment to meld man and machine, but that said, I love that kind of stuff, and for its time, this is a story that would have been so cool and fairly unique to see in a game. The characters of both the OCU and the USC are memorable, and even the side characters continue to hold relevance through the story for the most part. Considering there are modern entries in the genre that can't even do that, I gotta give Front Mission props. Like, how many times have you met a character in Fire Emblem that it's like, alright, cool, they were relevant for two chapters, and then other than their support conversations, they have zero story relevance for the rest of the game. Not really something that happens too often in Front Mission. Even very niche side characters that you're probably not even going to use because their stats are pretty bad will still show up in conversations and give their two cents, their opinion on what's going on, and that's really nice. The writing itself is quite solid, with each character having their own quirks and manner of speech that sets them apart. And there's a good mix of military humor and dramatic tension that keeps things varied. It's not going to win any prizes, but for a script that has its roots in a Super Nintendo mecha strategy RPG, it works just fine. Really, I'm more excited now to see how the world of Front Mission evolves past the conflict on Huffman Island, thanks to the setup and world building that Front Mission 1 provides, which is a great thing to say after playing the first entry in a series. As far as the graphics are concerned, I mean, there's just nothing but positivity to say here. First off, all of the character art is awesome. It still evokes that feeling of old, gritty PS1 Super Nintendo pixel graphics and character sprites, and has clear inspirations from Yoshitaka Amano, who did a lot of like the cover art and key art for the games, which is awesome to see. It, there's a unique style here that you really don't get in games anymore when you have just so much very clean digital art that's not very sketchy looking or rough, but I like having that type of stuff. It lends that feeling of this is a gritty ground battle between real robots destroying each other when the characters look just as rough as their machine counterparts, right? I literally never got bored of meeting new characters, both NPCs and player characters or enemies, who have all of these really fun, unique designs that were memorable, even though they, again, are fairly simply written. I know these characters now, and I'm always going to be able to recognize them on site, which is the hallmark of good art and good design. What's really notable here is the 3D graphical overhaul that was done for Front Mission First Remake. While the character sprites are still obviously like the sprites from the original game, just smoothed out, brought up to HD, not pixelated anymore, 
the actual 3D battlefields and Wanzer designs and everything are stellar. Like, the very first thing I felt when I started playing this game was, this is Armored Core Tactics. That's exactly what this is. The lighting and the designs of all the Wanzers, how they look both in the garage and on the battlefield, how they move around and attack each other, the different animations that you have for when you're firing different types of weapons, the models for the weapons themselves. Like, it all just looks so good. And it's so nice to have a very classic feeling strategy game that has such nice graphics because it's such a nice blend of the modern and the classic, right? Like really, I could just gush about how good the game looks for ages. I absolutely adore it. All the maps are varied with different environments, different types of terrain. And even when you go into different environments other than just like the standard jungle that you start in, you'll wind up like all of your wanderers will get covered in dust or snow or sand. You'll have battle damage on all of your individual parts. Sparks will fly as you take damage. It's just, it's really, really nice. And like, again, it's simple. But it's just, it just is so pleasant to look at. <laughs> that said, as much as I can gush about how nice the 3D graphics are, there is a little bit of wonkiness with some animations, specifically when you're moving around on the battlefield, where <laughs> your wands will take these like tiny little precious little stippy steps as they trundle around if they don't just boost to where they're going, if it's not a far enough movement to trigger that animation. Or even like if you have little spider mechs and everything, their little legs just do 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 which doesn't really evoke the huge screaming metal death trap war machines that these wanzers are but i mean i can forgive that it's kind of the nature of having a sprite based grid based map right is what it is i'm not too bothered by it it's just it's a little silly contrasted with the really nice 3d graphics but still honestly game looks phenomenal the other major overhaul that the game received was to its ost and its sound design and i gotta say while the actual ost can get a little repetitive just due to the fact that there's a fairly limited number of tracks that get reused constantly throughout the entire game, the tracks themselves are good. They're fun, they're catchy, they're earwormy, they're, they have a nice mix of standard background battle music as well as more emotional thematic pieces for big story moments and character conversations. And then there's more variety as well in the UCS scenario, probably due to it being developed later again, which helps add some variety to things. As far as the sound design itself is concerned, it's very nice. Shots and explosions feel powerful and impactful. Wanzer movement is satisfyingly mechanical and clunky sounding, and other units like helicopters sound very realistic. Sound design in a mecha action or tactics game is so important because it really helps sell the idea that you are in a big, bulky war machine, and you're either like punching the crap out of your opponents or you're all like shooting each other to pieces. And if it doesn't sound right, if there's not the right impact there, it's gonna cheapen the whole experience. But fortunately, in Front Mission First Remake, that is not the case at all. Those shots sound like they hurt, and your Wanzers sound heavy and impactful when they move, and it's great. I love it. Finally, it's important to touch on the fact that there are basic but necessary quality of life features. You can adjust the speed of gameplay combat, movement speed, you have the ability to turn off animations, skip cutscenes, all that type of good stuff, and you can save at any point, which for a game that started on a handheld console is so important. If you're trying to travel, if you're on the road, your battery's dying, or you get to your destination and you need to put the game away, being able to just save at any point, even in the middle of a battle, is absolutely massively helpful, and it's good to see in a game like this. There's not a lot of accessibility options in terms of like color blindness or difficulty modifications outside of just difficulty settings. But as far as just making the game feel comfortable to play in a general sense, everything that you need is there and it's very good to see. All told, I have very little bad to say about Front Mission First Remake. If you're going into this one expecting lots of modern game design with little distractions between missions, deep character customization and voice acting, stuff like that, yeah, you'll be disappointed, but it's important to remember that this is a creation of its time. It's a simple, fun, classic strategy game. And keeping that in mind as you approach it for the first time, I think will massively improve your enjoyment of it. Occasionally, yeah, maybe like a mission will run a little long or an animation will be a little wonky, but all in all, Front Mission First Remake has a lot of charm and it gets a big thumbs up from me. If you're a mecha or turn-based strategy fan and you haven't checked this one out yet, I absolutely recommend that you do, especially with Front Mission 2 Remake right around the corner, and see what you think. From everything I've heard from longtime fans of the series, one is beloved, 
but positively primitive compared to the innovations of its sequels. So if one is already this enjoyable for me, I can't wait to see what's in store next. That said though, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Let me know what your thoughts about the Front Mission series as a whole or this remake are down in the comments below, and let me know if this review was useful for you. I haven't done many reviews in my time, and figuring out how I want to approach them and what people want to hear from me in reviews like this one going forward would be massively helpful, so give me your constructive feedback as well. With all that said, though, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there, and remember, be good to each other. Bye now. <laughs>